Welcome, welcome everyone. This is Dr. Stephen Hobbs from the Wealth Movement. And you're listening in on what I call the Wealther Series. And I'm chatting with, having some great conversation with people who have some really wonderful, extraordinary insights about life and business. And today I have Dr. Dorothy with me. And as you know, if you've listened to others in the Wealther series, or if this is your first time, let me share. I don't read some prescribed bio. I let the person who I'm chatting with share what story comes to mind for today. And that's what I'm gonna do with Dr. Dorothy. But just before she does that, there is something I would like to share, <laughs> is that I was recommended to meet Dr. Thor Dr. Dorothy. Now, I mean recommended to have a conversation. <laughs> and we did. And it was it was it was great. And that's what led us to have this conversation. So I just wanted you to know that it came because of someone else and we're here now. So with that, Dr. Dorothy, I want to share a little bit about who you are, where you're going, what you're up to. Sure. I am. I'm going. God only knows why. I will find out when I get there. But um, who I am is I am in working with executives. I work with executives to really support them in having physical health, emotional health, spiritual health, in order to really be effective leaders and make sure they're following their passion, doing what feeds them, and able then to bring natural success into their life, into their business into into who they are as they're walking the planet and um, where I'm going it's really developing and taking this more and more taking both arena is actually taking the arena of developing leaders to be healthy effective leaders while simultaneously working with those in the health community so I can help change the face of medicine in this country and on the planet um, we've got a whole lot of needs not even being touched for a vast number of people. And to me, healthcare is one way into supporting people really becoming who they're meant to be. So with this notion of leader, uh, one of the things that I'm always curious about is how people define certain words. And leader is one of those that we could, whoa, whoa you know, it could be all over the place. But I'm just curious, what do you mean by leader lead? I, I believe every one of us is called to be a leader. I believe every one of us who is alive is called to be a leader. And what that means to me is that you are the one defining and, and leading where you go with your life. Who is it you want to become? What is it you want to do? And what is it that you see as your purpose on this planet? And when you recognize every one of us has a purpose, that it's your responsibility, if you will, your journey is about looking at what that purpose is, discovering that at some point in your life. And you know that by what, what are you passionate about? What makes you feel alive? What feeds you when you're doing it? And do you get out there and you do that? And in my experience, when you walk with that certainty, people tend to follow you. They follow you either because they believe in the certainty you walk in, or they follow you because they believe in your mission completely. And now we have a group consensus, if you will, a group process where all of us are walking together to, to create this purpose, to bring this into the world and make the world a better place. Now that can be as a family, it can be as a group of friends, it could be as a company. That's, it doesn't matter. Leadership isn't because of a position you hold, it's because of who you are. Yeah, and there's a, I, I'm, I'm going to have a little bit of fun here is that there's a sense of lead and leading. There's a sense of alchemy here as well. I'm going to use that word because lead said another way is lead. Mm -hmm. And the notion of lead to gold, right? That notion of alchemy, that story. I've always thought that that's really what leading is about is that there's an alchemy to it. There's a shifting of who you are, what it is that you do to this, this other way of being in the world and being for the world. And I think you, you, you've hinted at that. And that 
requires a, a lot of authenticity. I think that's sort of one of the magical elements is being authentic. What would you say to that? I, I agree with you completely. My first book, I've written several books. My first book was entitled Dreams Are Only the Beginning of Becoming Who You Were Meant to Be. And the backdrop of that is my autobiography of coming from an orphanage and being ra- adopted and raised in the housing projects of the inner city, you know, by an Irish Catholic cop and hanging in street gangs and whatever life is in the inner city. And then going on and doing many, many other things. I've been really blessed in my journey. But the, the, the premise of the book, the purpose of the book is to show that we have many, many, many dreams. We probably have hundreds and hundreds of dreams. And every time you have a dream, let's just say you're graduated from high school and your dream is to be a teacher. And here's this 18 year old that's decided I want to be a teacher, finds a school with teaching degree. By the time he or she enters the classroom, they've not only had four years of college in which in following the dream, they're not just academically growing, they're becoming more and more of who they are truly meant to be. And they now have to take the exams, they get licensed, they now can be in a classroom. And they get in this classroom and realize, oh my God, that was a really great concept. Now that I'm here, it is absolutely not at all what I want to do. But they've been here, they walked this mountain, and they really grew as they as they learn to study, as they do all the college experiences, teach you personally, emotionally, and academically. As you grow, the 22-year-old doesn't fit the dream the 18-year-old has. So now the 22-year-old usually used to come into my office and say to me, I made a mistake. I don't believe for a second you made a mistake. Let's look at where you are. That dream was perfect for the 18-year-old. The 22-year-old is now at the top of a mountain and has a vista the 18 year old never could have imagined. Now that you're up here, you've discovered a part of you you didn't have then. You've developed strengths you didn't even know you possessed. You've learned about your own limitations in ways, your own things that feed you, things that things that drain you in ways you never knew at 18. Now at this age, where do you wanna go next? What is your next dream? And no matter what that is, It takes really holding your nose and jumping off that cliff and going down because you've got another mountain to climb, another dream to achieve, more strengths to accomplish, more gifts to discover, and more gifts of you, who you are, that you can now bring to the world. So you end up having more of you to bring to the world than you had when you started. And with every dream we follow, it's the same process. We discover more strengths we didn't know we possessed, more things we enjoy we didn't even know existed. We discover more about our visions that we never knew previously. And with that then, there's so much more of you you're now capable of sharing with the world. There is so much more of you you're now capable of bringing into a healthier and healthier relationship than when you were 18 or 22, and it just keeps getting better if you choose to follow that path. It just keeps getting better if you're willing to learn, willing to take risks and follow your dreams, and willing to recognize that your life is everything you choose to make it, not what somebody else chooses to make it for you. For sure. And the, the it, that's, again, that's that shift that's taking place, like lead to gold or, you know, this notion of, who I am and I'm going to lead. There's this shift that's going on. But there is a phrase that you used, and I have to, if I can remember, uh, and it's it's just a short one, but it was really interesting because you were chatting about this leadership and then you linked it to spirituality. And I'd like to come back to that Mm -hmm. in a minute here. But you said something to the effect you've got to own it. Right. And I always like the word it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because it can be used in so many different ways. But you you were referencing own it, own the leadership, own the approach to leading. But I think there's more to it than that. Do you want to share or do you want to unpack that a little bit? Surely, that so many of us want to say, this happened to me, or I landed in this job, or I, whatever it is, you know, it's so, somehow I had nothing to do with it. And the fact is, it doesn't matter what it is, you had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. You happened to put yourself in a position 
where you were going to get into trouble or you put yourself in a position where you had the opportunity to open up the world. You need to own the fact that you created that opportunity because you took a risk to be present. My experience and that of many of those I work with is that when we make a decision that I want to, I want to work in New York City or I want to open my own company or I want to, whatever it may be, as soon as you make that intention, you make that commitment to follow through with that, amazingly, all of a sudden, all of these people you meet happen to know somebody in New York City or happen to know somebody who's an entrepreneur. And it's like, how did that happen? Well, because you opened up to a new reality, the new reality shows up. When we sit here and say, I wanna have my own company, what are you doing about it? Nothing, I can't figure out what it is. Okay, well, that's gonna help you a great deal. And then you just sit here waiting because somehow something is gonna show up in your lap and then you've got it made. You have to own the fact, this is my dream. I'm going to now associate with people who have their own companies or I'm going to join groups that help people start their own companies or whatever it is you choose to do. You've got to own it and not sit around waiting for it to happen to you. And when you own it, that's when things happen. Because you've owned it and you've started walking, you energetically shift and change things. And now it's amazing what gets drawn into your field, what gets drawn into your world that you never imagined was so close. Somebody you may have known for a year, but never discussed entrepreneurship, never discussed living in New York City with that now that conversation comes up and he or she says, oh my goodness, I know somebody who's looking for somebody just like you. It's like, wow, why didn't you bring it up earlier? Well, because you never mentioned you were interested, you know? So now you owned it, you put it out there. Now you're making things happen for yourself that never could have happened otherwise. So that's the leadership. You've got to own the fact that you are creating and if you're stuck, why? What are you doing that's keeping you stuck? Don't play victim. What are you doing that's keeping you stuck? It's not happening to you. Own the fact that you haven't been willing to risk or make changes or whatever, whatever it may be for you. Yeah, so there's, a, there's an element of spirit here then, what you're, what you're sharing. Mm -hmm. And you've used the word spirituality and you've linked it leadership. And Let's just take a look at this notion of how you see spirituality fitting into leadership and owning it. I guess the fact that I see this as a spiritual journey and I see all of us as spiritual beings. I, I don't think in relationship to religion at all, but I think of all of us as being spiritual beings walking a spiritual journey. And part of that is with my upbringing, the term I would use is as embodied souls. It could be as embodied essence. The word is irrelevant to me, but there's an essence in there. There's a quality, there's a being that's present. And when you identify, when you own that, that's the differentiator that for me says, I'm sitting here in this chair and out there at arm's length, is my partner, are my children, are my friends, are my career, and all the stages of my career that I've developed, are my family of origin. All of that is way out there, but I'm in this chair. I'm not the life I've created. I am not any one of those relationships. I'm in every one of those relationships, but I am not defined by those. I am a separate entity right over here. And I think when we can own the fact that I am this separate entity, there is, there is an embodied being here. There's, an, there's a soul here that is walking a journey. And consciously or unconsciously, I brought in all of that as my life journey, as my life script, however you want to word that. And any one of those can shift and change. But I don't need necessarily have to. I may choose to because I want to grow with all of the changes that come into my life. But those are separate from me and I can respond or react to anything that takes place over there. That choice is mine. So a sense of the linking that other word, authenticity mm -hmm. is 
what you're sharing, I, I'm thinking here is if you stay with the shift and being authentic to who you are, then the leading that unfolds from that right. is that which you can own, that which you can be for the world. That's a phrase that I keep using all the time because yeah. for years I was being in the world. And I said, no, 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 this has got to shift for me. I'm going to be for the world. Yeah. What's that phrasing of for the world and leadership and authenticity? What does that bring to mind for you, bring to heart for you? To me, that's about spiritual purpose. That's about, you know, this is a physical world and I need to be embodied and fully present in it and not walk around in concepts and illusions. I need to be fully present here because I believe every one of us in being for the world, every one of us is here to make this world a better place. And we make the world a better place to the extent that we make us a better place. The more we make us a better us, the more we have to bring to the world, the more awareness, the more wisdom. To me, wisdom is embodied knowledge. I can study and with the PhD and other degrees and a long, long list and list and list of certifications and licenses, I could list all those letters and that means nothing. Okay. It means absolutely nothing, but knowledge that is truly integrated becomes wisdom. And if I'm willing to pay that price through meditation or emotional intelligence or whatever, to pay that price to really embody what I've learned, I'm now in a far better place to support my own transformation as well as the transformation of all those people I meet. So I can support them in the development of their wisdom and them becoming more and more of who they are meant to be, whatever that means to them. I don't have an agenda on that. So the people I work with, I have no agenda as to who they should become. My desire is to support them sometimes in getting out of their own way because they, they believe the stories they've created are truth. And sometimes it's supporting them and stopping so they can recognize wisdom they've already acquired that they haven't even noticed because they've been going so fast to accomplish or to become who they think they're supposed to become that they lose touch with who they already are. Yeah, what, what's popping around right now is what you're, what you're sharing for me, the word that I'm gonna pop out here is natural gift is that if you're doing it, then this is like a natural gift, but also when you find others who are sharing it back, it's like a natural gift that's coming to you. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was beautiful. Now, you may have said that word natural gift to me somewhere, <laughs> somewhere else, I'm, I'm not sure, but it's just, hang on, I'm a natural gift that the giving and the getting is so important here. Yeah. Any thoughts on that part? That, that's, that's the natural authenticity because we're called to be in relationship with. And when you're in relationship with, there's always a giving and a receiving. If it's a healthy relationship, you have that. Unhealthy relationships, you have one person giving and one person taking. But where's the relationship? There's no relating to. You know, one is only relating to giving. I, I'm not part of this relationship. Or one is only relating to taking, to having their needs met. And the other is, is it replaceable, insignificant being that's really not a part of this relationship other than in service. So if it's going to truly be about relating back and forth, there is continuous giving and receiving. Yeah. And there's no concept about percentages because giving to you fills me. So it helps me be in relationship with me. And receiving from you fills me. And hopefully you're doing it from a healthy place and it fills you as well. So there's always this giving and receiving going on simultaneously. Because even when I give to you, I'm receiving. I, I'm falling in love more with me. I love the woman I've chosen to become. And I'm grateful and loving the fact that you allow me to be in relationship with you. So there is always this gift of exchange and a healthy relationship, even without words. 
You know? Yes, and I think if we go back to the words we sort of highlighted, like there's authenticity and alchemy and own it and 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 that sense of what we were we've been talking about, it is a gift. It's a natural gift. Yeah. It yeah. is natural. It's yeah. be and that's authenticity because it's absolutely natural. Yeah. And being natural is so important. Yeah. Right. And when that's blocked, we're in an unnatural state of defense for whatever reason. Yeah. And I think that that might be somewhere where we could pick up because folks with the Wealther series, you know that I will do two, three interviews or what I prefer to call collaborative conversations. So this is like the first one. So I've invited Dorothy. Why don't we have three? And she said, sure. And I said, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, thanks for this one. And we're going to pick up on number two and um, look forward to seeing you over there. So again, thank you, Dorothy. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you.